This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good morning, Rabbi Isai. We're very excited today to learn a new Sefer of the Treyasar, and that is Sefer Tsefania. I don't know that too many people have had this chus to learn Sefer Tsefania. Um, we already did Chagai, Zechariah, Malachi, um, and now we're learning Sefer Tsefania. So, of course, the first issue at hand is who's Tsefania? I never heard of him. I never met him. And that's certainly not a common name. I don't think uh, you were ever in a shul and they called up somebody, Yamoy, Tsefania, I don't know. But it's not a common name. And it's not a name that comes up often in the Gemara. But it's well, a name. It certainly was one of the great Nevi'im. The Rambam and the Hakdama to the, Sham- to the Mishnah Torah writes that Sefania was the student of Chavakuk Hanavi. And Chavakuk actually comes before Sefania. We'll have to get there. And he was also the Rebbe and the mentor of Yirmiya Hanavi. Tzifania? So Sefania was the student of Chavakuk and the Rebbe of Yirmiya. Now let's read the first pasuk and see if we could get some biographical information about Sefania. So, but what's wrong with Sefania being here if, the, if, that, if he was his Rebbe, so he come before him? So uh, Sefania was the Rebbe of Yermia. Yes. And was the student of Chavakuk. Oh, right, so if you said something... Really, Chavakuk, no, it, that's why Chavakuk appears yes. earlier. Right. Exactly, okay. exactly. Right. So the Pasha says, Devar Hashem, the word of Hashem Asher Hoya, that was El Tsefania, to Tsefania, Ben Kushi, the son of Kushi. Now, who's Kushi? We don't know. He was Tsefania's father. But we have a rule from the Gemara Megillah, <coughs> and that is whenever you have a Navi and it, and it says Ben somebody, then that person presumably was also a Navi. Okay. Then Gedalia, the son of Gedalia. Who's Gedalia? Also, we don't know. Then Amaria, the son of Amaria. Then Chizkia. Ha! The son of Chizkia. Now we're talking. Tsefania, his father was Kushi. Grandfather was Gedalia. Great grandfather was Amaria. Great grandfather was Chizkia. Rabbi Sai, the million dollar question is which Chizkia? Is this Chizkia or Amelech? Well, we know that Chizkiyo HaMelech did not want to get married because he saw Benavua that who's going to come out of him? A Russia. Menashe, he saw correctly. Until Yeshaya said, Look, what are you meddling in the fears of heaven? So Chizkiyo said, You're giving me Musr? You give me your daughter to marry if, you're, if, if it's okay that I get married. And um, Chizkiyo said, Maybe in my Zichas and your Zichas I'll have good children. So Chizkiyo married the daughter of Yeshaya. And who did that produce? Menashe. <laughs> Menashe was a yeah. Menashe was a, was a Russia. Menashe had a son, Amoin. Amoin had a son, Chizkiyo. The second Chizkiyo? Excuse me, Amoin had a son, Yisha, uh, Yoshiyahu, excuse me, Yoshiyahu. <laughs> Meaning, if this in fact is Chizkiyo HaMelech, and it's saying that Sefania, listen carefully, right? Chizkiyo HaMelech again married Yeshaya's daughter. They had Menashe, who had Amoin, who had Yoshiyahu. That would mean that Chizkiyahu here, he has a son, Amaria. That means Amaria and Menashe would have been brothers, Right? That means Gedalia and Amoin would have been first cousins. Amoin has a son, Yoshiyahu. That means Kushi and Amoin would have been second cousins. That would make Tsefania and Yoshiyahu second cousins once removed. Let's just review that one more time, right? One thing we know, Chizkiyahu HaMelech had a son, Menashe who had a son, Amoin, who had a son, Yoshiyahu. Here the Pasuk is saying there's a man by the name of Chizkiah who had a son, Amaria. If, in fact, it's the same Chizkiah as Chizkiah Melch, then Amaria and Menashe are first cousins, are brothers. Amaria and Menashe are brothers. They're both the son of Chizkiah. But it says Amaria is the son of Gedalia. No. 
And Gedalia is the son of Amaria. That would make Gedalia and Amain, Amain, who is the son of Menashe, that would make them first cousins. And that would make Yoshiyahu and Kushi second cousins. And Sephania would then be related to Yoshiyahu. So we'll have to see. Now, this Nevuah was Bimei Yoshiyahu, was in the days of Yoshiyahu, Ben Amain, who is the son of Amain, Melech Yehuda. So one thing that would have come out, listen carefully. Can we it, conclude that this is Chizkiyahu? We haven't said. We're just, we're, just, we're just trying to set up if this is possible, that this is Chizkiyahu HaMelech. Why? Can I ask the question? I mean, he makes a comment there. If it wasn't Chizkiyahu HaMelech, I mean, to go back and to list all these generations as far back as they did, would they list Chizkiyahu if he wasn't the Melech? They didn't give the Yichas of the, the, the Melech and to list it to go that far back, I understand, but if it wasn't the Melech, why would they go back so many generations? Unless we're trying to apply the rule that whenever you have a Navi and it says his father, and we don't know anything about the father, it's to teach the father was also a Navi. So it could be what the Pasuk is saying, is that it's listing these generations to teach that not only was Stefania a Navi, but all the past generations were also Navi. But again, let's get the family tree and see if this is possible. You have a man by the name of Chizkiyahu, right? He for sure had a son, Menashe. If the, that Chizkiyahu is the same Chizkiyahu as in this Pasuk, he had another son, Amariah. So Amariah and Menashe were same generation. They were brothers. Menashe has a son, Amoin. Amari has a son, Gedalia. They're first cousins. Amoin has a son, Yoshiahu. Gedalia has a son, Ben Kushi. Second cousins. Kushi has a son, Safania. That would put Safania in a different generation than Yoshiahu. Yoshiahu was an earlier generation than. Sefania. Now, is that strange? Is that possible? That Sefania, Sefania is basically the great great grandson of Chizkiyahu, and Yoshiahu is the great grandson of Chizkiyahu, right? Because Chizkiyahu's son is Menashe, Amain. Chizkiyahu's right. Chizkiyahu's son is Menashe, son. Grandson is Amain. Great grandson is Yoshiahu. So, is it possible that a great Grand, great great grandson could live at the same same generation as a great grandson. Yes. I would say, of course. Right, exactly. Yeah, why not? What's what's the problem? So, Rabbi Sai, with that introduction, let's look at the Ibn Ezra. Okay. The Ibn Ezra says, well, "You see the first Ibn Ezra on Sefer Tzifanya, Hisker Hakasav Shemois Ha'Avos." The Pasuk is mentioning the names of the Avais. Ad Shehigia Lenichbad. Basically, we're trying to trace back until finally we get to a name that we recognize, right? We say, Sefania, who's he? Son of Kushi. That doesn't help. Ben Gedalia, doesn't help. Ben Amaria, doesn't help. Ben Chizkiah, oh, finally it helps. The who, who's the name that we recognize? Vu Chizkiah Amalach, that's King Chizkiah. In other words, the Ibn Ezra says, in fact, this is uh, Chizkiyo, because otherwise, like you argued, well, well, why are we mentioning this Chizkiyo? We don't know who he is from a hole in the wall. V'hineib, and behold, al derech hasvara, amariya haya, achi menasha. It's very reasonable to assume amariya and menasha were brothers then. Amariya was the son of Chizkiyo, menasha was the son of Chizkiyo. V'yal tisma b'avor ki yoshiyo shlishi l'chizkiyo, And don't wonder, well, Yoshiahu is the third generation of Chizkiyahu, and then Tzifania is the fourth generation. In other words, one second, it's not strange that Yoshiahu should be the third generation. Why? Because that's very reasonable. Because from the time Chizkiyahu had children until Yoshio reigned, it was a hundred years. So the Ibn Ezra feels that it's very reasonable to assume this, in fact, is Chizkiyahu HaMelech. Okay? Let, let us use that as a springboard to the Abarmanel. Is we trying to make the point to tell Yoshio 
that would make Tzifania and Yoshiahu what? Second cousins once removed. Where do we have... The Pesach doesn't say the only, the, the right. relationship, it just talks about time. Correct. Well, you mean, why wouldn't the Torah say that they're related then? Yeah. I don't I mean, know... it gives us all the heritage, I mean, of the... the uh, I don't think cousins... Cousins are, as far as I know, are usually not mentioned in the, the Tanakh. That the, these two people are cousins. Especially here, it's a second cousin. It's not really a halachic. In other words, second cousins could marry each other. So it's not really a halachic First relationship. First cousins could marry each other. First cousins could also marry each other. <laughs> I don't know if it's recommended, but they can. Right. Okay. What? Ah, oh, right. Another good point. It doesn't say Chizkiyahu, it says Chizkiyah, but that's common that names like Yirmiyahu and, and Yoshiyahu are sometimes uh, Chizkiyah, Yirmiyah, Yeshaya. Sometimes the Vav is dropped. Let us see the Abarbanel. Okay, the Abarbanel, this one is courtesy of Rabbi Yosef Farbowitz. Who printed us for us this morning? This is one's mine. Page Kuf Ayin Gimel. Page Kuf Ayin Gimel. The um, the Baranel begins that Gam Hasefer Hazehu Nevua Achas. This book is one prophecy, Medubekes, which is attached to each other, Mitzchilasoi Viatsoifa, from beginning to end. There are eight topics. Okay? And the Abba Rinal goes on to ask six questions. But we didn't read any psukim really yet that he asked questions on. Let's go to the end of the page. Hakavana Hakoilalas. The Abba Rinal says, To get the basic gist of this prophecy, Hakavana Hakoilalas, the main intention here, the general intention here, Binavu Azois, Hilo Hidia. It's to teach Shehera HaKadosh Baruch Hu as Tzifania Chorben Bayez Rishon. Hashem is showing Tzifania the Chorben Bayez Rishon. So the first thing we need to do is we need a little bit of a reality check because until now for a long time we've been learning about prophets that prophesied in the 70 years between Bayez Rishon and Bayez Sheni. For example, we started out with Sefer Daniel. And Ezra Nehemiah was the beginning of Bayez Sheni. And Chagai, Zechariah, Malachi were, were also beginning of Bayez Sheni. Now we have to go back to the end of the first Beis HaMikdash era. After all, we mentioned that Sefania was the student of Chavakok. And the Rebbe of who? Yermia. Now Yermia was the prophet of doom. He prophesied about the downfall of the Chorben Bayez. So this is a generation before. So this is to sh- this prophecy of Tzifania is to teach that Kadosh Baruch Hu showed Tzifania the Chorim Ma'is Rishon, the Golos Bnei Yehuda, and the exile of the Bnei Yehuda. Asher Yichlol Haroim the Gama Toivim, the Golos of Bnei Yehuda included the bad with the good, the Hatzadikim Sheiu Bahem and the righteous Shelo Yimolid Echad Mehem Eacherev Oymin Agolos that by Chorim Ma'is Rishon no one escaped. Tzadikim, Rishayim, they all suffered either the sword or exile. The Nosan Itzal La'anshei Doirai. And Sefanya is advising the people of his generation, Mayasu, what they could do, Lahashiv Charein Af Hashem, to cause God's wrath to withdraw, Me'aleim. V'hoidiyo Yoid. And he's notifying them, Sha'achar Chorban Yushalayim, after the destruction of Yushalayim, Tia Mapola. There will be a downfall of the Chorban Gamkein Leplishtim. Ah, we're going to see in Sefer Tzifania that with the downfall of the Jewish people, other nations also had a downfall. Namely, the Plishtim. Umayav, Ba'amoyna, Yidei Nebuchadnezzar, Ba'avoyn Ma'ashacherfu, V'gidfos B'nei Yehuda, B'zman Chorbanan. That Amoyn, Mayav, and Plishtim, when they saw the exile of Yehuda, they mocked us, and to punish them for that, they were destroyed as well. Batia Shimamas Plishtim Mayav Baamoin Masmedes Kokach Mehazman Ad Shabishov Yisomigos Bavel Al Admas Kodesh Yich Bishov Yimshov Artsahim. The Jews, by the time they return, they will conquer the lands of Plishtim, Amun and Mayav. 
וגם כל הגויים אשר אכלו את סיסו ויהודו בבל ואשר וכוש כולם יהיו לחרבה. By the time the Jewish people return to Bayi Sheni, Bavel is destroyed, Ashur is destroyed, Kush is destroyed. The Hera Kosh Baruch Hu Oyd Navi, Hashem will show the Navi Shehaumahi that this nation, Acharei Shetigal Mi Bavel after they're redeemed from Bavel, the Tosh of Yushalayim Bebin Yibayi Sheni, La Yishmu B'Kal Hashem. Hashem tells Stefan, you should know that even when I bring the Jewish people back to Bayasheni, they still will not listen to Hashem. They will not trust in Him. They will trust in their might. And ultimately Hashem will have to destroy the second Mesa. And God will not redeem us from the second destruction so quickly. But He will wait until the decree day that He will ultimately take revenge on the nations of the world. Whatever Goyim survive, the ultimate revenge will recognize Hashem. The Jewish people will never return to their disgrace. Hashem will remove the Mardim and the Poshim, and they will not sin again. Okay. But still, that doesn't give us an explanation of who Tsefania is. So please look on your pages on page Kuf Ayin Dalet. I don't know if we need the steam on so high, right? So page Kuf Ayin Dalet, uh, Pasuk Aleph. You see, you got that? Kuf Ayin Dalet, Pasuk Aleph. Devar Hashem, Asher Hoya, El Tsefania, the Goimer, Ad Asoif Asofkom. Okay. Says the Abarbanel. Herba Hakosov Liyachis is Tsefania La Avoisov Arba Doirois Ishmaish. The Pasuk goes to great length to give the genealogy of Tsefania four generations, right? Who is Tsefania? His father was Kush, his grandfather was Gedalia, his great grandfather was Amaria, his great great grandfather was Chizkia. Amazingly, we still have no clue what Shevet he came from. So you say, yes, we do. If he's from Chizkiah Amel, Chizkiah was a king. He's, he's from David. He's from Yehuda. Says that Barbara Vulayarza, we you don't even know what land he comes from. Hey, Nemes, the truth is, Yes, we know that his parents and grandparents were great people. And one thing we know is he was the son of a Navi, based on how do we know he's the son of the Navi? Kivan Shanizguru Bakasov, because he's mentioned in the Pasik. Vishahaya Bamalchus Yehuda. And he was in the days of King Yoshio, the Malch Yehuda. And that's why he prophesied on Yehuda and Yushalayim. However, we don't know, says Abarbanel, who he was. Aye, but for Harav Rabbi Avram ben Ezra Kosav Shehizkar Kosav Shemos Avoisa, Ad Shehigia Lenichbar Chizkiyahu, Umidar Chasvar Amar Shu Chizkiyahu Amelech, V'Shamar Yoshenizkar Kan Ben Chizkiyahu Achiv Shom Menasha. Amar Yo must have been the brother of Menasha. Aye, that would make Tzefania fourth generation, and that would make Yoshio third. No, it's not a problem. So the Abarbanel quotes Ibn Ezra, who said it's not a problem. It's not a problem that they lived at the same time. It was over a hundred years from the time Chizkiyo reached adulthood until Yoshio became the, the king. Says the Abarbanel, now, sometimes he argues rather vehemently. We've had where the Abarmanel argued on the Ibn Ezra and he said, Daitoi Hevel. Here, he's not as uh, powerful. 
Right? He says, My mind is not inclined to the logic of this wise man. In other words, he's respectfully disagreeing. If this chizkiyo was chizkiyo melchito, lo hoya mekatz or akos of melazoychroi, then why wouldn't the Torah, why wouldn't the pasuk mention? This is not just chizkiyo. This is chizkiyo hamelach. In other words, this should be such a detail of note that it, it must. If it was true, it would have been pointed out. It would never would have said he's the son of chizkiyo without saying chizkiyo is melach yehuda. Vihine al amain amar melach yehuda. It didn't say Yoshio was a Melech Yehuda. Yoshio was a Melech, right? It calls Amoy in the Melech Yehuda. Now I would say Melech Yehuda is going on both of them. Maybe it's going on all three. No, but there's an Asnachta after Chizkiah, right? It's true. Doesn't it just say in the days? How do we know the Yoshio and Amoy were part of the generation? We don't, but, it, but what the Rabbinel's point is... Yoshio and Amon, or at least Amon is being called Melech Yehuda. Yes, so that means the Pasuk is giving everybody their, good, their correct credentials. Why wouldn't it then call Chizkiyahu Melech Yehuda? Don't say, well, the Pasuk is being Makatsar. Because when it comes to Amon, when it comes to Yoshio, we call them Melech. Why wouldn't it call Chizkiyahu Melech? Amon only ruled two years, yet he still gets the, the title of Melech. Oyal Yoshio. Or maybe, no, Rabbi is not sure when it says Melch Yehuda. Is Melch Yehuda going on Amoin? Or is it going on Yeshiyahu? It could be going on Yeshiyahu. Why would the Pasuk not call Chizkiyahu Melech? After all, Yerushalayim was only saved from Sancherev in the merit of Chizkiyahu Melech. Why would the Torah not give him his proper title? Another argument. Gam ki chazal shekiblu hu amiti yosayla. Our sages who have the true tradition, amru b'psikta rabasi, they make the following comment in the psikta. We say that that uh, Yoshio and Amun were part of that generation also. Is it just saying bimhei? Yeah, it's saying it was in the days of Yoshiaho, right. right? But he doesn't be one of the ancestors. Correct. But it's calling one of either Amoin or Yoshio a king. Yes. So if Chizkiyahu was the Chizkiyo Melch Yehuda, why wouldn't it call Chizkiyahu a king? Yeah. Right? Okay, but you always said that Yoshio and Amoin were part of the ancestry. That's not the case, right? No, not part of the ancestry. If this Chizkiyahu is Chizkiyahu HaMelech, yes. Chizkiyahu so, happened to have had a son, Menashe. Yes. Menashe had a son, Amoin. That's the same Amma? Yes. And Amma had a son Yoshio, the same Yoshio. What about his father Kushan What about them? They're also. Awesome. Where do they come in the ancestry? Well, that's the thing. If this Chizkiyo is the Chizkiyo Hamelech, that means both Tsefania and Yoshio were both ancestor, were both descendants of Chizkiyo Hamelech. Okay? Then he quotes the Psikta. Tsefania haya echad mi gimel neviim shenis navu ba'ose hadar. Tsefania was one of three neviim that prophesied in that generation. Who are they? Listen to listen to this uh, psikta. Okay, Rabbi, you're listening. Yirmiya haya misnave b'shvakim. In other words, the psikta is bothered by kasho. Why do you need three rabbis? Three, one of three rabbis. How many rabbis do you need? It's hard enough to have one rabbi. You need three rabbis. See why three? Each one had a different job. There were no assistant rabbis back then. Interim. Yirmiyo hayi masnavi b'shvakim. Yirmiyo gave drashas in the marketplace. Tsefania b'batei kinesiyas b'batei midrashas. Tsefania gave um, speeches in the shuls. V'chul da'itza hanashim. So these were the three prophets that prophesied together. Says the Abarbanel, does it say here that Tsefania was Mizera Hamalucha? Avalay Amru Shahya Tsefania Mizera Hamalucha Bimne Chiskyo, Kamay Shahamar Bi Shahyahu, Shahaya Ben Achiv Shalamat Samel Chihuda? 
by the Navi Yeshaya, it tells us how he's related to the king. Why wouldn't it say how Tzaphania was related to the king? So, for example, if you have, uh, do you have Yeshaya in any of your books? What? Yeshaya is considered, uh, is listed as a descendant and related to Amatsya. Why wouldn't we say that Zephaniah is related to Chizkiah? This is a different Chizkiah. This Chizkiah was a very nice guy. He was an Adam Nichbad. He was an Adam Choshev. He might have even been a Navi. But he wasn't Chizkiah Melech. Avaloha Yezeh Chizkiah Melech Yehuda. Where? Then Amon Malkuda, Amon is Malkuda. Maybe Yoshiyahu was not. No, Yoshiyahu we know is a Melech. We already know that. Yoshiyahu, we know is a Melech. No, Yoshiyahu we know, we know the son of Amon was a Melech. That's well known. It says in Sefer Melachim, it says in Devar Hayamim. But here we're listing Tzafania as the son of Kushi. As a son of Gedalia, as a son of Amaria, as a son of Chizkiah, nowhere in Old Tanakh does it say Chizkiah had a son of Amaria. So uh, Ibn Ezra says, uh, uh, yeah, here, right here it says it. So the Abarmanel argues that if this was the Chizkiah Melech Yehuda, it would have given him the title Melech Yehuda. Ahamnam, Zohar, Kosov, Shanovetz, Shanibe, Tzvan, Yubimei, Yoshio, Melech Yehuda. Vahadas, Noi, okay, another thing. Let's not say, so here we, we learned uh, an amazing machloikis between the Ibn Ezra and the Abar Benel. Is this Sefania, the great great grandson of Chizkiah HaMelech? The uh, Ibn Ezra says yes, and the Abar Benel says wrong guy, wrong Chizkiah. Now let's talk about another thing. If you remember, there was a king by the name of Yoshua HaMelech, and I believe it's Kina Yod Aleph, Vayakoinen Yermiyahu Al Yoshio. Yoshiahu was one of the greatest kings of all time. He created a nationwide tshuva movement where the Jewish people returned to God, b'chalev v'chal nefesh, and he really turned around the fate of the Jewish people. Until Yoshio came to reign, who was the king before Yoshiahu? Amoin. Who was before Amoin? Menashe. Menashe and Amoin were wicked. Menashe was wicked, and Amoin, when he took over, he continued... The wickedness until he was assassinated by the prison guard, by the uh, palace guards. We just learned that Sephania prophesied in the days of Yoshiyahu. So wait a second. Was Yoshiyahu responsible for the Chuva movement? Or maybe uh, Sephania was also responsible? After all, they're in the same generation. Well, the Abarmanel says, Vahadas nois no shahoyeza betchilas machusai, biyois bnei Yehuda, roim vichatoim lashem ma'oid. The prophecy of Zephaniah must have been in the early days of Yoshiahu. Why is that? Because The psikta that the Abarbanel quotes over here was cut short. The psikta said three Nevi'im prophesied at the same time. Who are they? Sephania, Yermia, and Chulda. Sephania was in the shuls, Yermia was in the streets, Chulda was for the women. The end of the psikta was, and nobody listened to him. Listened to, to any of the three Nevi'im. Any. any of them. Now, if... The Pasuk says that Zephania prophesied in the times of Yoshio HaMelech. Now, but Yoshio created a, a tremendous nationwide tshuva movement. So why weren't pe- people listening to Zephania? In other words, even though the people did tshuva, they only did tshuva because of Yoshio, but, but these, were, these other Nevi'im... Correct, so the question is, Yermio we never found prophesied in the times of Yoshio. Yoshio. So it could be Yermia prophesied before, and then Yoshio came along and he created a tshuva movement. So, I mean, it's fine to prophesy the early stage Yoshio's reign, ah. and he didn't do very well. Yoshio said, Look, 
to do something about this. So that's he started to exactly. Move the Abarbanel says that you have to say that. Sefania prophesied in the early days of Yoshiahu before Yoshiahu became strong enough to influence change. That's what the Abarbanel says. Mahadas noisna. It's very reasonable to say that Sefania prophesied in the early days of Yoshio, when the Jewish people were very evil, before Yoshio returned to God with all his heart and soul. That's why Sefania was predicting all these terrible things. Because at this point in time, nobody was listening to anybody. Not to Yirmiya, not to Cholda, not to Tzifania. Says, I don't know, but maybe we could say that it was the prophecy of Tzifania that inspired Yoshiahu, which caused him to take action. In other words, we don't have to say that Tzifania's Navu was completely and utterly dismissed. He says, We're going to see one of his famous prophecies of Tzifania is improve yourself then improve others Bikshu as Hashem maybe that's why they sought out Hashem and that's why his soiru Yoshio ba'an Shehuda Lashav al Hashem so therefore the Abarbanel says it's reasonable to assume that he prophesied in the early days of Yoshio when people were evil and nobody was listening and it could even be that his words had an impact and had was the impetus for Yoshio's tshuva movement you still don't know who he is right who he was, that was the first Machlechus. Ibn Ezra says he's the great great grandson of Chizkiah Melech. Abarbanel says he's the great great grandson of a nice guy named Chizkiah. Okay, but that, we don't know exactly who Chizkiah is. He's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. Very nice guy. Okay. And not only was he a very nice guy, he was also an Ish Chashav. And he's also an Ish Nichbad. The Ulai, he was a Navi. Ulai. We can't say it definitively, but that's what the Abarbanel says, right? He was Nikhbar Khashov Ainavi. So I just want to add one thing. Let's take a look at the Radak and the Mari Kara. Look in the Radak. Yesh Oimrim ki chizkiya za chizkiya malchihuda. The Afshir Elashem is Araya. Says Radak, my opinion is it could be, but we don't have a proof. But his grandparents were great. Okay. There were three Nevi'im that prophesied in the days of Yoshio. Yermi Yitzvan Yechoda. Ah. And his Nevi'im was Kaidim Sheshava Yoshio V'yehudim Eir It was before they did Shuba. So what do you prophesied never happened? Is that what we're saying? Now the Marie Kara is by the way. That means he, what he prophesied never happened. Because it's the truth. So let's see. One last thing. The Marie Kara. Are you related to the Marie Kara? I don't think so. I don't know. I really don't know. Doesn't know. So, okay. Marie Kara has the following question. That this Yoshio who was a Tzadik Amor. Right? Like we mentioned. And nobody returned to God. Like Yoshua Melech. So the question is, so why, if, if Tzifania is prophesying during his time, so why is Tzifania giving this prophecy of gloom and doom if you have this king that, that created this worldwide, this nationwide tshuva movement? So we answered, yeah, it was before the tshuva movement. And he could have actually been the... the and the impetus the of causing it. So did these prophecies come true or not come true? In other words, if there in fact was a, a nationwide tshuva movement, what happened to the, the uh, pr- prediction of the prophecy? Well, the Marie Kara says, mm-hmm. The Gzair was still on. Why? But it was delayed. It, was not, it did not come true in the, the lifetime of Yeshua Melech. It was just delayed. Now, one of the reasons why... Um, it was not delayed. Why it wasn't abolished is because as great as the tshuva movement was, it wasn't perfect. Like we say in the uh, Kinnah, Kinnah Get Aleph, there were still some people, the late Sane Hadar, hid the Avoy Zara behind their doors. They had a double door system. And, uh, and therefore, that's why Yermia warned Yoshiahu that you're being a little bit naive in thinking that your tshuva movement is... Uh, Universal 
is, is uh, acceptable. Okay, Rabbi Yisai, we'll hold it over here. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.